I decided just within the past couple of days to do a short trip to the city of Barat. This morning, I got up early and took the two hour bus ride from Vlora. I'll be here for a couple of days. I have read a little bit about Barat. For instance, it is known as the city of a thousand windows. Plus, the Osam River divides the town into two parts. Other than that, my idea is for us all to discover this place at the same time. You won't want to stay until the end of this video as I will reveal my total cost for five weeks in Albania. For now though, it's Barat, and more specifically, I'm right here at the Barat Castle. The castle of Barat has endured plenty of damage through the years, but the complex remains very impressive. It looms over the modern day town of Barat, 214 meters, or just over 700 feet, up on a hill. There have been fortifications here since the 4th century BC, according to the experts. The castle was destroyed and rebuilt a number of times through the ensuing 2,500 years. The Romans made improvements here in the 5th and 6th centuries. The Byzantine Empire ruled in the 13th century when significant work was carried out of the castle. What you see now are mainly the remnants from that time period. The castle today is a standout among Albania's historic sites. It's not something I would associate with Albania, but it's really beautiful, yeah. At times there is an entrance fee for the castle, but on the day that I visited, there was no one collecting money. The place does attract a fair amount of tourists, but the number is nothing like the crowds that would descend upon this place in other parts of the world. I was just quite shocked to see less tourists here. I've always have, have been to somewhere where there's a lot of tourists. Um, it's just nice to run around. And there's around queues and it's busy and you have to pay for everything. Yeah. It is possible to drive or take a taxi up the castle, but walking is a great option if you are able to do so. The path or roadway can be steep, but it is not a very lengthy height. As I approached the castle, there was a traditional musician performing for tips. That scene and the sound produced served to establish a traditional atmosphere to the visit. I would suggest walking the perimeter of the castle grounds when first arriving. The walls are in various stages of repair, but it gives a sense of the large scale of this site, and it provides views of the countryside surrounding the citadel. Through the Byzantine and Ottoman periods over the centuries, the makeup of the castle was overwhelmingly Christian. It contained up to 20 different churches, with many of those dating to the 13th century. A good number of those exist today in some form. One that is incredible is the St. Mary of Blackerney Church. One of the oldest in Barat, it was said to be built on the ruins of another 5th century church. The exterior is nice, but the interior is stunning. It is filled with frescoes on every wall. Those colorful pieces of art were created in the 16th century. Typically, cameras and video aren't allowed in a place like this, but the only restriction posted was on flash photography. Equally appealing here are the mosaic tiles on the floor of the structure. Probably the most attractive church from the outside is this one. It is the Holy Trinity Church, a Byzantine creation that dates to the 13th or 14th century. A cool feature here is that there are not other buildings crowded around. That makes this stand out when compared with many of the other attractions within the castle. There were only a couple of mosques within the walls of the castle. These are the ruins of the White Mosque, which was built out of white limestone in 1417 during Ottoman rule. It was destroyed during an uprising in the 19th century. Some of the foundation walls and the base of the minaret are all that remain. This is also part of a ruined mosque and not a smokestack. It is known as the Red Mosque. One striking feature of the castle seems a bit out of place. It is a huge sculpture of the head of Constantine the Great. He was the Roman emperor in the late 3rd and early 4th centuries. Constantine is said to have been the first emperor to believe in Christianity. There is some remarkable history here, but this place is not just about the past. It's alive. There are hotels, restaurants, even homes situated here. It is within the interior of the castle that the living nature of this place is most evident. In addition to those shops and restaurants, there are over 100 homes situated here. 
It gives this place a much different feel than what I typically experience when visiting a historic site. Apparently, that is not all that unusual throughout this part of the world. The church in our village is from the 1200s. I think, you know, we were christened there. So I think we're quite used to seeing a living place with history. With all that this place had going for it, I spent all morning roaming around and even kept going into the afternoon. Since the opportunity existed, I figured that I would grab just a little something to eat at one of the castle's restaurants. I chose a place called Antipatria Traditional Food and was able to snag a table outside. Let's give it a try. Off of the menu, I selected something light, a very simple dish of stuffed peppers. The rice is not too spicy. It's got uh, some peppers and some other vegetables in there, but the pepper itself on the outside, really very sweet. The highlight though, is the view that I've got from here. With that view, I was able to look down on one of the streets and see some of the houses in which people still live. The restaurant's name, Antipatria, refers to the ancient city that was said to have existed on this site. For a truly spectacular view, I made my way to the viewpoint. From that spot, there were remarkable scenes laid out below of Barat and the river that cuts through the middle of it. Soon after, I headed down the hill and began exploring the main part of the city. The Osa River is a great starting point for getting to know the area. There are a couple of ways to cross the river, but this is the path that you want to take. This is the Gorica Bridge. It has been here since the 18th century, 1777 to be exact. The Gorica Bridge that is seen today is only on the side of that bridge from the 1700s. The original span was made of wood, but it was taken out during a flood at some point. This structure was built in the Ottoman style in the 1920s. It features a number of arches to let the river flow underneath and sits about 33 feet over the surface of the water. The distance covered by the bridge is much longer than a football field at 423 feet. This is not only functional in allowing people to move from one side of the Osum to the other, but it is an attraction itself. The Gorica Bridge gets all of the attention, but what they call here the new bridge is pretty fantastic as well. The new structure is a suspension bridge, and from the standpoint of beauty, it compares quite favorably with the more historic span. The attractiveness of the pedestrian paths across the river added a great deal of enjoyment to Barat. My final stop of my first day in the city was in the more modern section. I actually saw this from up at the castle, came down here to check it out. It's a long, wide thoroughfare meant strictly for pedestrians. I think it's about time for a beer because there are all these shops, restaurants, and bars right along this avenue. This is called Boulevardi Republica, and it has those shops, restaurants, and places to drink on one side. On the other side is Lulistia Park, which provides a place to relax and play on the river side of the boulevard. I stopped into one of the many establishments lining the pedestrian way and ended my day of exploration with a cold, tasty beer. It was a fantastic beginning to discover in Barat. The base for my stay in the city was the Russ Villa Hotel. It was simple, it was clean, and the price was phenomenal. Two nights, a cost of $44. You can't do much better than that. Welcome to day two in Barat. The place I'm staying is a little bit out of the center, so it's about a one and a half to two kilometer walk to get there. Along the way though is this great little park. It's always nice to have green space. This is Parku Deshamaret Ikambit. It parallels the street for several blocks. There are many places to sit and relax. There are also some features added to the space to make it more appealing. With the sunshine coming through the trees early in the morning, this is quite inviting. I returned immediately to Boulevard Republica. It too had a different look in the morning light. At this time though, I was on a mission and it wasn't long before I achieved my goal. I got so busy yesterday that I never had a chance to get coffee. I'm not going to let that happen two days in a row. And by the way, yes, it is cappuccino. I got my morning fix at the Inn Pedernali Coffee Bar. It's one of many stops along the boulevard where it is possible to grab a cup. The views of Barat from the river are spectacular. On both sides, houses seemingly sprout at ground level, then grow up the hills. These views give the city its nicknames. Many call this the city of a thousand windows for obvious reasons. 
In Albania, though, that is slightly different. It's the city of one over one windows. The name Barat, which comes from the Slavic word Belgrade, is interpreted as the white city. Barat is incredible. I, I love how the city is old and preserved. This place is one of two UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Albania. It received that designation in 2008. There is history and there is uncommon beauty, which combined to make this a unique place on the planet. I mean, I saw pictures before I came and I, I knew what to expect, but my expectations were not dashed. They it really met up to my expectations. Years ago, there were two distinct parts of the city and not just because of geography. This side of the river was known as Mangalam. It was the Muslim community. This part of town was called Gorica. It was populated by those of the Christian faith. Those distinctions have long since faded away. I'm finding that one of my favorite things to do is just to wander these streets and alleyways. Use whatever adjective you want. Charming, quaint, alluring. And the good thing is, those apply to both sides of the river. It is such a cool experience seeing what you can find while taking one road and then turning onto the next alley. Around every corner, there are discoveries to be made. In some spots, these paths are legitimate streets made for vehicles. In others, though, they narrow until it is possible to touch both sides at once. Sprinkled throughout, there are restaurants and inns. It seems, though, that the higher in elevation, the more the buildings are the homes of people who live here. I checked out both sides of the river and found them to be equally satisfying in terms of what could be seen. In all, I spent a couple of hours meandering, climbing, descending, just completely relishing the experience. My advice for tackling these areas is to wander until you get lost. When you don't want to be lost anymore, all you have to do is head downhill. It is 100% fail safe. What a wonderful way to make an afternoon so captivating that you will remember it for the rest of your life. There are a few additional locations that should be seen on a visit to Barat. This main square demonstrates the religious tolerance that has developed here. On one side of the square is the St. Demetrius Orthodox Cathedral. It's built in the Greek Byzantine style, but is relatively new to the landscape. It was completed only in 2014, after many years of construction. On the opposite side of the square is this building, the Lead Mosque. Unlike the cathedral, this place is historic, having been created in the 16th century. The name comes from the lead coating on its domes. A short distance away is the Medieval Center. It includes several structures erected during the time of Ottoman rule. The King Mosque is the most prominent. It took shape around 1480. There are a couple of other interesting historic structures within the complex. This is the Bachelor's Mosque. It was built in the 1800s and the bottom floor is now used as retail space. When I initially saw this structure, I assumed that it was a seat of government. It was an incorrect assumption. It is the Colombo Hotel, which is a five-star property. I was able to check out the lobby area and this place is pretty sweet. Rates here are listed at around $60 per night. As I was exploring, I came across a group of students in traditional Albanian clothing. They were performing a dance routine to be captured on camera. Staying out of the way, I grabbed some clips as well. It was well choreographed, and I enjoyed the colors and the movement and the enthusiasm. Those songs, they were traditional, yeah. but the dances, like, they were modern. It was a combination. This is representative of the love that Albanians have for their country. It gained its independence really not that long ago, in 1912. It is apparent that the spirit which led to gaining sovereignty and then continued coming out from under communist rule in the 1990s is alive today. I'm proud to be Albanian. As my second day in Barat was getting closer to the end, I stopped by the Friendly House restaurant. I ordered a bowl of soup and a traditional dish from Albania. As usual, the food arrived quickly. Let's give the soup a taste. Oh, so very nice. Uh, it is vegetable cream is what it's called. By the look and the taste of it, I can swear there's probably some pumpkin in there. Very good. It was full of rich flavors and the croutons added nice texture to the dish. The soup was soon just a memory. 
Time to move on now to what they call Albania Basili. It has cabbage and it has spinach. Let's give it a try. Mm. It's warm. The spinach is like spinach dip inside there. This is a winner. I don't recall specifically, but the soup, the pasilli, and a beer all cost less than $10. The setting of the friendly house made the dining experience that much more pleasurable. It was then back to the Boulevard Republica for one final stop, a nightcap at the Bar Cafe Sun. My favorite kinds of beers back home are Imperial Stouts, bourbon barrel aged if you want to be really specific. I haven't been able to find much that is like that here, so I'm drinking blondes and lagers. My favorite two are El Bar and this, Corcho. Not bad. It's always appealing to end a day of exploration and discovery by sitting outside with a drink in hand. Now the price tag for my five weeks in Albania. I stayed 35 nights, and with other side trips, I paid for 41 nights of accommodations. The total, $965. My Airbnb for 35 nights came in at $767.15. In a couple of other categories, I spent a total of $323 on groceries. Eating out for the month was only $176 as I cooked numerous times in the apartment. I succeeded in staying under my target of $2,500 per month with a total of $2,362.93. Of course, that was longer than a month, so adjusted to reflect a 30-day time period, it would be $2,025. Not bad at all. I am thrilled with my decision to make this trip to Barat. It was a fantastic way to see a little bit more of Albania during my final few days in the country. I have enjoyed my time here in Albania more than I could have ever anticipated, and I will miss this place. Now though, it's time to move on. I will see you next from Athens, Greece, for now, I can only imagine what wonders are waiting there.